Right now, another partisan showdown, this time between the Attorney General and the leaders of a probe looking into last November's presidential election in Wisconsin. Plus, a neighborhood near San Diego in ruins tonight after a plane slams into it. We'll update the death toll and the damage left behind. And we're showing you the tireless work being done to ensure that Afghan refugees in Wisconsin will have a place to call home. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. Well, there are still some showers and thunderstorms on the radar tonight on what has already been a soggy day for much of southern Wisconsin. Yeah, that's right. We thank you for joining us. That storm system in Wisconsin, now the same one that spawned tornadoes across parts of Illinois today. But good news, the threat for severe weather is just about over for southern Wisconsin. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has our certified most accurate forecast. You know, the clouds and rain that we had today not only soaked the ground, but it also lessened the severe weather threat and kept it mainly to our south. You can see the severe weather reports. Number of tornado reports from just north of St. Louis through central Illinois and into north central Illinois. One of those uh, tornadoes uh, just west of Springfield, Illinois, actually blew a semi off of I-72. But those storms weakened as they got close to the Wisconsin-Illinois state line because the air was a little bit cooler here. And you can see now on Doppler track, uh, very little in the way of lightning even across southern Wisconsin. It's mainly just rain showers and an occasional flash of lightning, mainly from that cell uh, across Columbia County to the north of Madison. Otherwise, fog is starting to form. Visibility down to two miles in Mineral Point. Uh, most areas still seeing visibilities between five and ten miles. High temperatures today, upper 60s. It made it into the 70s over far southeastern Wisconsin. Kenosha was close to 80. That's where the severe weather threat stayed highest through the day, but even there, uh, the storm stayed mainly to the south of, the, of southeastern Wisconsin. Temperatures now in the 50s north and west of the Wisconsin River, mainly in the 60s elsewhere, with those dew point temperatures close to the temperatures. That's why we're seeing the fog form. So expect areas of fog and a chance of showers overnight with the low of 56. Tomorrow should be mainly dry. If there is a shower chance, it'll be early in the day with a high of 67. But another weather system could bring another round of showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday. I'll take a look at that in the forecast in just a few minutes. This investigation suffers from glaring flaws that destroy any credibility that its results could have. And there is a showdown growing tonight between Wisconsin's Democratic Attorney General Josh Call and these two men. The state's top Republican legislator, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, and former state Supreme Court Justice Michael Gableman. Madeline O'Neill joins us now with the story. Well, this all started after the 2020 presidential election when the Trump campaign ordered a recount in Milwaukee and Dane counties. Now, that recount confirmed President Biden's win in the state. But early this year, the state's Republicans opened an investigation into what they called irregularities in the election. Nearly $700,000 of taxpayer money is going into this investigation with former state Supreme Court Justice Michael Gableman at the helm. Now, last week, the investigation moved forward when Gableman issued subpoenas for election materials to five Wisconsin mayors including Madison Satya Rhodes Conway. Now AG Call is sending a clear message. So my request to Speaker Voss is simple. Shut this fake investigation down. Attorney General Josh Call isn't mincing words. This is one of the problems with this sort of uh, build the plane as you're flying it mode. With former state Supreme Court Justice Michael Gableman at the wheel, a man who's claimed the election was stolen, Call says this investigation was biased from the start. It is continuing to fan the flames of the big lie, and it is falsely undermining confidence in our elections. What Call labels broad and overburdensome requests to clerks. Gableman calls basic information he needs to do his job. We're doing this so that the people can know that their government administered the election fairly, honestly, transparently, and with accountability. This is Gableman in a YouTube video over the weekend. After all, we're trying to give the people of Wisconsin a complete and accurate understanding of how their elections were and are run. Some are questioning Gableman's understanding of the process. Janelle Brangen, chairwoman of the Assembly's Elections Committee, says, quote, I do not approve of the current list of subpoenas to the five Wisconsin mayors, as this provides immunity to them in any trial or criminal proceedings. Brangen notes that, like Call, much of what the committee learns about Gableman's actions are from the news and YouTube videos. She's also calling on Gableman to focus on an audit of physical ballots and voting machines to rebuild trust. Here there seems to be uh, no agreement even within Republican legislative leadership about what they're trying to, to, to seek here. Call says not only is the investigation unprofessional, but unnecessary. We know that Wisconsin's elections were freely and fairly conducted.
Speaker Voss is responding tonight, saying in a statement, quote, in order to restore confidence in our election system, Justice Gableman will continue his investigation, and that the subpoenas have been issued correctly, backed up by the nonpartisan legislative council. Maddie, thank you. We're still waiting for answers from the Dane County Sheriff's Department on potential charges or the identity of the man accused of causing the crash that killed three local high schoolers earlier this month in Middleton. So far, all we know about the suspect is he's a 30-year-old man from Madison hospitalized after the crash with non-life-threatening injuries. Last week, the department said charges are pending and said they're expecting to release more information this week. The man charged in a Sun Prairie homicide earlier this year could face up to 18 years in prison under a plea deal. According to online court records, 34-year-old Anthony Young pleaded guilty today to a charge of second-degree reckless homicide in this case. As part of the plea deal, the state dropped three other charges. Police arrested Young, and he was charged earlier this year for his involvement in a shooting that killed 29-year-old Shanton Robinson in February. Robinson was dropped off at a Madison clinic with a gunshot wound where he later died. It's a story we have been following now for weeks, and we are expecting a substantial announcement tomorrow. The coroner in Teton County, Wyoming, is expected to hold a news conference in the early afternoon when we will all learn the results of Gabby Petito's autopsy. The FBI says Petito's remains were recovered September 19th in Wyoming near where she was last seen with her fiance Brian Laundrie. A preliminary autopsy ruled the death a homicide. A small plane has crashed into a residential neighborhood near San Diego, California, leaving at least two people dead and multiple others injured. Anthony Pura has the latest from Los Angeles. A twin engine Cessna slammed into a neighborhood in Santee, California, just after noon Monday, setting at least two homes on fire. The crash left debris scattered for about a block, impacting 10 other homes and several vehicles. This is not a type of call that we see every day. And again, uh, the, the scene is pretty graphic. It's pretty horrific for our personnel as well. There are at least two confirmed deaths. One was the driver of this UPS truck. It's not known how many people were on the plane flying flying to San Diego from Yuma, Arizona. We believe that the injuries are non-survivable for anyone that was on that plane. Neighbors say they saw at least two people being taken away from one home by ambulance. They pulled the lady out and then they had to knock the fence down to get uh, the husband out. Santee is located about 20 miles northeast of downtown San Diego. The FAA and the NTSB are investigating. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. At least a dozen homes were impacted by the crash. Two burned to the ground. The plane went down a few blocks away from a high school. No students were injured. A popular Southern California beach that has been closed for more than a week after an oil spill reopened today. Huntington Beach City and state beaches are now open after tests came back negative for oil related toxins. Upwards of 132,000 gallons of crude oil was spilled. She worked for three U.S. presidents and is one of the longest serving chancellors in recent UW history. But Rebecca Blank is moving on. We learned this morning she is taking the top job at Northwestern University in Evansville, Illinois. She will be the school's first female president when leaving Madison next summer. Blank became chancellor at UW in 2013. Her more than eight years leading UW is the longest tenure since back in 1986. This afternoon, Blank explained her decision to leave at the end of the school year. You know, nine years is a, is, is a good run. And um, at some point, you know, it's time for other people to take over in terms of leadership. I feel like I've done a lot on this campus um, and, uh, you know, someone else with new ideas can come in. Blank doesn't have does have some history at Northwestern. She was part of its faculty from 1989 to 1999. Interim UW System President Tommy Thompson said in a statement today that Chancellor Blank's strong leadership has helped add to the university's strong legacy. Community organizations and people are working to prepare and welcome refugees into central Wisconsin. Now, one of the big needs will be housing. Emily Davies toured a home. One family is getting ready to help fill this need. We just closed on the house on, I think it was the 25th of September, so pretty recently. Thank you, I'll grab those. I had grand plans to get everything all ready within five days, but of course, things never go quite as planned. Rebecca Voss and her family of nine have been busy fulfilling a mission. They're helping the Ethiopian Community Development Council resettle refugees, making them feel safe and welcome in Wausau. The thing that really drew us to this is is the what 
the representative from ECDC told us is the hardest thing sometimes can be convincing landlords to rent to refugees. The two were already saving up to purchase a home and become landlords and prayed about who it should serve. Refugees don't come with credit reports. They don't have jobs when they first arrive. They don't have any rental references. So combining what they've saved, their stimulus checks, and a commercial loan, they're refurbishing a home with refugees' needs in mind. We knew that we wanted to be within Wausau and close to the bus system because when refugees come, they aren't going to have cars and driver's licenses and all of that. They need to be close to the services, to jobs, to schools, and to the bus system. They were also mindful of possible family dynamics. We fit four beds in this bedroom. And potentially renting to more than one family. So this is actually a pocket door that locks so that if there is a family that would be best to be just in the downstairs, they can and they can be separate. But if it's one big intergenerational family, you just open up the pocket door and you have access to the separate stairs up there. We took a look at a lot of stuff and there was, this was a diamond in the rough. There's so much potential. You can have a workshop. People could, you know, start a small business. If it's a larger family, there's room for everybody to feel welcome. The Vosses, Rebecca, a pastor, and James, who works with homeless individuals, have been working to help the community coordinate refugee efforts with ECDC. They encourage people to help where they can. We have a lot to be excited about as we prepare and, and not to give in to the fear mongering. Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind and open heart. And that was Emily Davies reporting. Today is Indigenous Peoples Day. Governor Evers signing an executive order in honor of that, acknowledging the role the state played and formally apologized for Indian boarding schools. These stories have been erased from mainstream history books and reporting. And unfortunately, the sheer lack of documentation means that we don't know the full scope and effects of boarding schools in Wisconsin and across the country. Well, this is the third time the state has celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day, the first recognized back in 2019. And still ahead tonight, Dane County Regional Airport celebrating the return of a popular non-stop flight. And the FDA now looking at a drug said to provide an at-home treatment option for COVID-19. At Star and Bank, we think having choices is important, so you can choose the products that are right for your life. What are you waiting for? Explore the possibilities today at StarInBank.com. Looks like you're not sleeping well. How did you know? And Megan! Hey! You're that guy. The My Pillow guy. That's right, and I'm here to help you get the best sleep of your lives. Oh, you have a down pillow. Here's the problem with down pillows. You lay there, you feel comfortable, and guess what? It goes down, and you got one bent neck. So this pillow's no good, and I see you sleeping on memory foam. Right, right. I'll show you what's wrong with that idea. Okay. Sleep's all about too high or too low, and I'm going to okay. show you where your comfort level would be. You know, that feels better. Right, that's better, but I'm not going to sit and hold this all day. <laughs> so every morning you're getting up like, you know, it's not mm -hmm. good. Just like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. I had tried every pillow out there and none of them worked. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck aligned. Call or go online to take advantage of my best offer ever. For a limited time, when you use your promo code, you can get premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now only $29.98. That's right, only $29.98. That's the lowest price ever. It feels great to wake up in the morning and feel well rested. It's shocking to me that a pillow could make this big of a difference in my life. Sleep is one of the most important things to your health, and my pillow is one of the most important things to your sleep. Call or go online now to take advantage of my best offer ever. Use the promo code to get queen size premium my pillows regularly $69.98 for only $29.98. Get king size my pillows for just $5 more. It's the lowest price ever. You're sleeping better. Much better. And you're looking good. Feeling, Feeling good. good. I knew you would. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world visit mypillow.com Today's the day to go farther with a partner that provides you innovative solutions for your own personal financial future. 
Explore the possibilities today at StarInBank.com. Tomorrow morning, as we head into flu season, our Time for Kids segment tells you why a flu shot should be part of your child's recipe for health. And we continue to track more rain chances. We're breaking down the latest forecast tomorrow morning from 430 to 7. You are watching News 3 Now at 10. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. Welcome back. Taking a look at the latest numbers from the Department of Health Services, the seven-day average of new daily cases right around the 2,500 mark. DHS says more than 8,100 Wisconsinites have now died from COVID-19. Drug maker Merck is asking the FDA to grant emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 treatment. Merck says the antiviral capsule can reduce the risk of hospitalization or death from COVID by 50%. That number comes from a study involving 700 patients. Merck has already sold 1.7 million treatment courses to the U.S. government. In Texas today, Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order banning all state entities, including private employers, from enforcing vaccine mandates. In a statement, Abbott said the COVID-19 vaccine is safe, effective, and our best defense against the virus, but should remain voluntary and never forced. For anyone looking to take a trip to the Big Apple, the Dane County Regional Airport now has a daily non-stop option for you once again. Today, the airport celebrating its first non-stop the LaGuardia since the start of the pandemic. Jane County Regional had 24 nonstop routes before the pandemic, went down to just 11. This now gets MSN back up to 17 nonstops with more in the works, including Boston, LA, and San Francisco. The anger and frustration at Southwest Airlines of the passengers there as a weekend of delays and cancellations has now stretched into today. More than 360 flights were canceled today after about 2,000 were called off over the weekend. Why it's happening isn't exactly clear. Now, the airline blames the weather and, quote, other constraints. About 18,000 18, athletes have crossed the finish line at the Boston Marathon. The race was held today for the first time since the spring of 2019. A pair of Kenyans were the first to cross the finish line for both the men and women. The 125th running was scheduled for April of 2020, but the pandemic forced it to be postponed and then canceled for the first time since 1897. It also postponed this year's race six months and meant fewer runners and rolling start times to promote social distancing. And how about this? Tiger Woods was reportedly spotted back on the green this weekend, just eight months after his car accident. People Magazine reports the 45-year-old was at a Florida golf course with his girlfriend and his 12-year-old son, Charlie, who was competing in a junior tournament. Woods injured his right leg after his car accident in Southern California. Doctors had to surgically repair bones in his ankle and foot. Well, we've had quite a bit of rain in parts of the viewing area today, but this system was nasty when it was to our south, Gary. Yeah, we fortunately missed out on the severe weather because of the rain. It kept our temperatures a little bit cooler. Tonight, we're looking at mainly rain showers. The last of the lightning is just about gone, so I'm not even looking at any more thunderstorms overnight. You can see to our south that band of showers and thunderstorms that produced some severe weather as it lifted northward just kind of fizzled as it moved into Wisconsin because the air was a little bit cooler here. Rainfall amounts over the last couple of days have totaled about one to two inches from Madison southward. Uh, here at the station, we picked up about an inch and a half uh, late last week, and then we also picked up about a half inch today when I checked the rain gauge. But to the north of Madison, the amounts dropped off quite a bit. Much of southern Minnesota, northwestern Iowa haven't seen any rain over the last couple of days. And as we take a look at future track precipitation, uh, we'll see another round of showers and thunderstorms probably on Wednesday, and maybe a chance of a shower Thursday, Friday, or even Saturday morning. You add that all up, though, and we're looking at probably about a quarter of an inch of rain over southern Wisconsin. There might be a few places that get more than that in a heavier thunderstorm. Storm, but these storms on Wednesday will be fast movers, so they're not going to put down a lot of rain. And after that, Mother Nature turns the switch off again, and it looks like we'll see dry weather for all of next week and maybe much, if not all, of the following week as well. So we have a prolonged dry period uh, shaping up. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for mild conditions to continue with highs in the upper 60s for tomorrow and for Wednesday. And then we'll see that uh, round of thunderstorms on Wednesday, followed by cooler weather by the end of the week with near-normal temperatures and, again, it should be dry. As we look at high temperatures,
temperatures today. Uh, you could tell where the clouds were in the showers. That kept temperatures in the 60s to our south. Temperatures were well into the 70s. Kenosha made it up to 79 degrees. And then farther out to the west where there was more sunshine, temperatures were in the 70s. But farther to the north and west, temperatures are really starting to cool down because the jet stream splits right now. That's why we saw the thunderstorms here. But notice the jet stream dipping down to the south, allowing colder air to start plunging southward. And notice the snow that's starting to show up in the mountains. Uh, starting to see our first major winter storm there. And that's behind this cold front in an area of low pressure along it. In fact, right now, winter storm warnings in effect for much of northern Wyoming to parts of southern Montana with winter weather, weather advisories to the north and south of there. Just a sign that, you know, it's mid-October and uh, we'll be seeing those temperatures drop uh, soon enough here. But right now, we're still in the 60s. With the high humidity, we're not going to see our temperatures drop off too much more, and that will also lead to some areas of fog. On future tracking, you see how the showers really start to wind down tonight, and there might be a sprinkle or two tomorrow morning, but other than that, just cloudy skies for tomorrow. A few breaks in the overcast tomorrow night, and then here comes that band of showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday sweeping on through, maybe one or two bands, but they'll be quick movers and probably not going to bring much in the way of rain. So as we check out our forecast for tomorrow, expect mostly cloudy skies, just a slight chance for an early morning shower with a high temperature of 67 degrees. As we look at our 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures in the 60s through Thursday, then we'll see the chances for rain go down as we head toward the weekend. Temperatures drop off a little bit. A brief rise early next week, and then toward the end of the week, temperatures in the upper 50s. That's average for this time of year, but notice the nighttime low of 38. Could start to see some frost chances by the middle of next week. And coming up in sports, Brewer Bats didn't come to play again. Here are Craig Council's thoughts on his team's slump in the batter's box. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Dr. Andrew Orton, board certified plastic surgeon and host of The Doctors. If you're like most people struggling with areas of stubborn, diet resistant body fat, then it's time you call Sotobello. I lost two inches here in the waist and I lost three and a half inches here in my hips. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. I got to buy four brand new bikinis. I had abs after Sotobello. Sotobello can remove stubborn body fat permanently in just one visit. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly on your stomach, back, or even your thighs. I actually tried a bikini on and I looked in the mirror and I thought, wow. Call 1-855-417-8921 or go to sonobello.com. This is Ford Truck Month. Time to take a ride in the all-new 2021 Ford F-150 with an available 12-inch touchscreen, an available interior work surface, and for powerful performance on demand, a class-exclusive available ProPower onboard mobile generator. These are America's best-selling trucks. This is Ford Truck Month. Inventory levels are coming back up, making Truck Month the time to get an F-150 with 0 for 72 and 1,000 retail order bonus. Stressed. Break it out and get back to feeling great at Planet Fitness. Now through October 13th, join for just $1 down, $10 a month, and cancel any time. With tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Get free workouts on our app and use the crowd meter for the best time to visit. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends October 13th. Five Madison area locations. Stop in today. Celebrating 40 years of winners and readers. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Edgewater. Sample food and drinks, enjoy music, and meet some of this year's winners. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th at the Edgewater. Tickets are online now. Presenting sponsor, Woolersheim Winery and Distillery. And supporting sponsors, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and Beef Butter Barbecue. What is all this? We call them options. Options? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Unbeatable selection without the drama. Two pair plus a free eye exam as low as $59.95. Besides Brad Davison, Johnny Davis, and Tyler Wall, there's a lot of new faces Greg Gard is trying to get ready for the upcoming men's basketball season. So obviously this group is going to look a lot different and play a little different than what we've been accustomed to seeing from Wisconsin basketball, but it's still going to have that Badger feel of their game. And after eight practices, Gard is happy with the progress he's seeing from his young team. You look at what has been good to us and what we need to compete at a high level and compete at the upper echelon of this league. Um, this group has the potential to do some things. So the best time of year is coming. Uh, when you get out of the fall workouts, we finish our summer workouts, we're not running the hill anymore, we're not in individual groups, you know, we're all in the gym together as a full team. The Marissa Mosley era is officially underway in Madison. The new Badger women's head basketball coach takes over a program that is in need of a rebuild. So what's step number one for Mosley to get the Badgers in, in a better spot than she found it? Well, have her team believe that they can win no matter who they're playing. And so far, her squad has bought in. I have an expectation that when we step on the floor, we're going to win. Um, and I think that translating that to my team has been really um, successful so far and that they believe that they can be even better than they have been. Coach Mo has done a good job of helping us realize the mentality that we need to have in order to win. So I think just using that and having trust in each other. The Brewers and their bats have been on different pages the entire series against the Braves. In the first two games, the Indiana LDS, they've scored a total of two runs and were 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. But that's not going to get the job done, but a win in game three would fix all of that, and everything was going good until the fifth. No score, two on for Jock Peterson, and three gone. Peterson blasts a three-run shot to right, and that would be it for the Brewers. The crew now up to 0 for 16 with runners in scoring position in the series. That's not great. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it, we're in it, you know, and we, I thought we swung the bats better today. Uh, there's some, you know, we, we didn't, luck wasn't on our side today with, with some balls and some key spots. Um, some good starting pitching is, is making it tough on us. Um, and we got to catch a break, frankly. Steve Stricker taking in a rainy day one of the state girls golf meet and he'd like what he saw from his daughter Izzy in her short game. She taps it in for par on six. Stricker finished four over tied for 12th. As a team, Wanakee is seventh. Middleton tied for first thanks in part to Ellie Frisch. Here's one of her two birdies on the day. She's tied for third, four shots back. The meet continues tomorrow. We're back after this. It's Alien Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off store-wide. Get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. It's a fact. We use our internet and TV more than ever, with most of us spending nearly seven hours a day online. So it's no wonder thousands of families are switching to Spectrum. Because most families have up to eight connected devices, which means they need even more speed. Switch to Spectrum Internet and get the fastest starting speeds for the price. 200 megabits for just $44.99 a month, with a free modem and free security suite included. Call 833-546-4499. When it comes to TV, we're watching more than ever. In fact, 80% of us watch TV every day. Spectrum TV lets you catch all your favorite sports, news, and more live. Plus, download the free Spectrum TV app and watch on your devices. Switch to Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-546-4499. The fact is, Spectrum has the best services at the best price. Switch to Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. We'll even buy out your current contract. Call 833-546-4499. He doesn't just talk. Democrat Alex Lazary gets it done. Help build Pfizer Forum on progressive values. Wages, $15 an hour. Materials, 80% from Wisconsin. Environmentally, cutting edge. Alex Lazary. Leader on social justice. Proven activist for voting rights. Alex Lazary. The Democrats have beat Ron Johnson. It's why Alex Lazary is endorsed by Wisconsin's leading unions. For Senate, Alex Lazary. I'm Alex Lazary, and I approve this message. We're divided, but we can agree now's the time to help hardworking Wisconsinites, right? Nope, not Ron Johnson. See, on lowering prescription drug prices, Johnson was a no. Adding dental and vision to Medicare? Nah. 
or making childcare more affordable to help people get back to work? No way. What about making the rich, like him, pay their fair share in taxes? Heck no. Tell Ron Johnson, time to say yes to building Wisconsin back better. At U.S. Cellular, we know the local landscape, so we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. While the other guys may limit your options, at U.S. Cellular, you choose any phone and we make it free. That's right. Visit our store and any phone you see is free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month and get the most out of our state-of-the-art network, wherever you choose to go. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Don't miss A1 Furniture's 42nd anniversary sale. Save up to 42% off name brand mattresses and get 42 months free financing plus tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Trust the First One Weather Team for your most accurate forecast. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. And finally tonight, Superman is set to come out as bisexual in an upcoming comic series. The fifth issue of the DC comic series follows John Kent, who is the child of Clark Kent, Lois Lane, as he becomes Earth's new Superman. In the comic, the Man of Steel enters into a relationship with a male reporter. Images from the comic show, the two sharing a kiss and sitting atop a building together. Series writer Tom Taylor said the evolution of the new Superman is keeping with the values the character has always represented. Importantly reflects the experiences of many comic book fans. And here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with a final look at our forecast. Well, just checking the uh, live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Not seeing much in the way of fog yet here in Madison around the lights of the Capitol. But you can see still a couple of showers. Th these are starting to diminish pretty quickly. Not seeing any more lightning, so I think the thunderstorm threat is over. Visibility down to two and a half miles in uh, Mineral Point. A few places between about four and five miles. And we'll see the fog become a little more widespread overnight. Temperature is still in the 60s through much of southern Wisconsin. A few 50s to the north and west of the Wisconsin River. Look for a low tonight of about 56 in Madison. High tomorrow, 67. Should be dry during the day tomorrow. Maybe just a slight chance for a shower early in the day. Showers and thunderstorms Wednesday. Showers on Thursday morning. A chance of showers Friday and maybe Saturday morning. Cooler this weekend. A little warm-up next week and then cooler toward the end of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good and we'll see you back here tomorrow.